strategy is defined as a plan of action designed to achieve a particular aim. Finding your winning strategy can happen overnight or can take years to develop. Here on the Strats Podcast, I hang out with athletes, experts, entertainers, and adventurers, some old friends and some new, to hear how they found their edge in a particular field or for a particular event. Expect to hear about motivation, personal struggles and successes, and actual advice for anyone looking to be better today than they were yesterday. My name is Charles Thorpe. My work has allowed me to share stories from the best and the brightest, and I'm bringing those conversations here. Chief says to Perez, every time I go to war, I know I'm going to lose someone, and I know it's not going to be me. You know, And so there's a different kind of tragedy. There's a different kind of sense of loss. He knows he's going to lose a lot of people, and he knows it's going to hurt. That was actor Pablo Schreiber, and his time for the Strats Podcast. Pablo, good to see you again, man. How are you doing today? Excellent, Charles. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about Halo, man. The last time we chatted, season one had just come out. Yep. You know I'm a fan of the game. I'm a fan of the series. Yep. I really enjoy what you guys have done with this. I know you were really excited with the new showrunner and all the things you guys had planned for season two the last we spoke. Tell me a little bit about what it felt like going into the season two. The project for me has been um, it's been amazing to work on. Huge honor, obviously, to get to play the role, to carry the mantle of Master Chief, one that one that I don't take lightly, and one that I've I've worked my ass off, quite frankly, um, the whole time. But it's also been a real challenge. You know, it's been hard. It's been like sometimes feels like you're pushing things uphill a little bit. First season was really difficult, and second season was difficult too. It, it all had its moments. You know, it's it, I'm learning a lot about politics and about you know how many people there are involved and how many different opinions there are and what you have to navigate you know and with a franchise this size but for me I just really wanted to try to make something of quality you know if I'm in it I want it to be good (laughs) Uh, especially if you're the face of it you know you really really want something to be good I do and so you know I know the fastest way to get to a quality product or the best way to get to a quality product is always starting with good material you know so for me it always starts with getting a good writer so I had a friend of mine David Wiener came in and and took the reins and he's just an amazing writer his dialogue is fantastic he has an approach that I knew would be really really good for the franchise of halo he has this blend of like mysticism and poetry in his writing that suits the franchise really well and he has an eye that i that i trust the tone he's found for the show i think suits it a lot more that's darker and and more mysterious the action sequences are are way better than they were last season mostly because of how we treat them they're more subjective you're in the battle with the soldiers and the whole show feels more subjective you know you're you're seeing it from a from the soldier's point of view and i think it uh, it does a lot for for just raising the stakes and raising the quality so uh, i'm happy that uh, you know the results have been positive the we're, we're at like a 94 or 95 or something on 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 to Tom- rotten tomatoes right now so the reviews have been really great the audience uh, response has been much better so it feels good to 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 have that kind of response and at the same time for me i still haven't made the show that i I really want to make you know Mm. but it's but it's uh that's just the it's collaboration is so hard you know it's so hard to create with so many other people and end up with something that you that you can feel really 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 proud of and and at the end of the day feel like is yours um i do feel proud of it i'm happy with the product and um and for me you know i would i would keep pushing further and further and further if that is where we were going so let's see no i love that man and i think you know i i can say that those those ratings those positive ratings i'm right there with it man and i have been you know for the first season too you know our first conversation we talked a little bit about prepping for this character but now we're here on the second season and I do enjoy you mentioned you guys are at war you know there's a lot of action a lot of great action in this second season so you know tell me a little bit about prepping for those scenes what it was like to set those up 
the difficulties that were different this season versus the first season. Mm. Um, yeah, I think one of the first things that David said to me when he came on board is that it was that what he really wanted to do is make an eight episode war movie, and you feel that you know with this season, the stakes are higher. Uh, it feels more dangerous. Um, it, everything is just uh, you know obviously the covenants on the doorstep at the beginning of the season, and then by the middle of the season things are just fucking they're in your water. home excuse they're, my, they're, they're, they're at language. the door they're they're there and um yeah it all it all goes crazy in the middle of the season and there's a lot of tragedy and heartbreak and it gets real real dark and but that's that's what war is you know and so you have to if you want to tell a war story you have to go to those places you have to go to the dark places and also in order to have triumph and heroism and resurgence and the return of your hero you got to go to the to the low places you know so hopefully the end of the season will feel um spectacular and and uplifting and all of those things like you said they're in reach they're they're absolutely you know the the stakes are very high and like a great war movie there's great moments characters showing a lot of you know depth of humanity and then those people being taken away, which is really brutal. Like, I'm yeah. not going to spoil anything, yeah, but yeah, there are yeah. some very brutal moments yeah. with people that you actually fall to love. Like, you actually fall in love with this, uh, which which has got to be tough for you again. You know, you're this character that we know is going to persevere or, you know, to, to a degree, you know, through the lore, we know you're going to persevere. But you're meeting these new characters. They're having you're having strong connections and conversations with them. And then they're gone that's gotta be that's gotta be rough as an actor yeah and well as an actor and as a character i think uh, there's a line in in episode four in fact that uh chief says to perez every time i go to war i know i'm gonna lose someone and i know it's not gonna be me mm. you know and so there's a different kind of tragedy there's a different kind of sense of loss when you know it's not about me the actor knowing that i'm not gonna die right. it's in, in this situation it's about a character that has what we'll call luck or like you know that that something yes. about him that uh, that is that is special that allows him to be the chosen one basically and he knows he's he's he knows it's not his time he knows he's not going to die but he knows he's going to lose a lot of people and he knows it's going to hurt and you know that he also knows that that sacrifice is one that has to be made yeah um and to have to live with that you know is a, a big burden you know, I love to talk about the physical preparation. Yeah, I got the chance to train with you and Eddie Rayburn, the the legend, the man, the myth. And I know you guys do really good work together preseason. You talked a little bit about that first season, you know, that conversation's out there. We did that story of you getting ready for the armor. You know, were you able to lessen the weight of that armor at all? I know that was something that you were hoping for, lobby a little bit less than uh, the full impact of the full weight of the last time. They did a bunch of work on the suit um, in between seasons. To be honest, uh, it didn't help much. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it was really, it was really helpful uh, aesthetically. I think mm -hmm. the suits look better. They look, they look the, the the changes from season one to se season two in terms of look are fantastic. Um, but they're not, they they are not any. They tried to make them more functional, but they didn't, they didn't succeed in making them more functional. That's fine. It is what it is. You know what I mean? The suits are are a hard thing to yeah. deal with. To, to shoot them well in any event, however you do it. One of the best things that we sort of develop in making them come alive for the stunt sequences is uh, just using a little more motion capture, you know, and adding that into the arsenal. I think that helps a lot because you can do things that you can't do physically in the suit. So that, that, was, that was a big important part of our arsenal this year. And honestly, just the thing of shooting it more subjectively and being in the fight is the thing that made them come alive more than anything else because you're not seeing them from a distance you're not seeing them in these static shots from back here where you can tell they're plastic you know you're right up in it and everything's moving fast there's fog it's like nothing is quite clear so it makes it feel more kinetic more energetic all of those things um, so that was the biggest change in I think bringing the fights alive as far as the training um, you know we we took it to another level we, yes. we just kept progressing because what you're really dealing with when you're dealing with training for something like this is you're dealing with the limitations of your own body you know I'm 46 years old I have a certain sort of uh, ceiling that I can get to at this point and it's really a matter of like 
pushing myself as far as I can go, uh, gaining as much muscle as we can gain in the time that we have to gain it, and then holding on to it as successfully as possible through uh, a nine month shoot, which is my big challenge mm -hmm. because it being in the suit, it, you know, obviously we're sweating a lot, you're working 10, 15 hours a day, it's hard to find time to train. So keeping the muscle on over the nine months is, is, is my big challenge, uh, getting the diet and all that stuff. But, you know, I think uh, you'll see from the results that even in that respect uh, we pushed it to another level you know the the my body in that in the season two is at a uh, further place than we got it for season one and you know just just trying to continue moving forward with everything yeah i love the gyms that we see in some of the spartan rooms you yeah. know that, that that build out looks crazy insane yeah. is that actually where you're training you and eddie no. or yeah no. it looks sick when God, I, no. I was like man i love to gym. Yeah. i want to train that gym bro no those are all i think it's probably you're talking about when, where riz is yeah, doing when riz start, is, right? yeah. yeah exactly yeah no i was just a build uh, in some random actually it was a crazy location that was this like uh place in budapest that they were trying to build an indoor zoo and it's been being constructed for like six or seven years and they ran out of money and so it was just this place that they let us use that it was a wild 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 set um anyway no we trained we trained at a gym in downtown budapest not too far from from where i was living uh and i also had a little accessory gym in my home that i would do stuff at night time nice. and then we had always had a setup at the studio or at wherever we were shooting as well so i could go in between stuff and pop something out i know you guys do a lot of work with the mobility with yep. the functional training yep. the run of course with master chief is key so yep. Tell me about dialing in those elements, those especially, especially the run. Those, yeah, those are yeah, probably even more important. Well, the, you know, you have to you have to have a muscle base that looks impressive, right? So getting the physique to a place where I have enough muscle because I'm naturally pretty thin, uh, putting on enough muscle where I look big and intimidating enough to kind of carry the role is challenge one. Challenge two is staying mobile and flexible enough so that that body type is actually usable and functional where when we do the stunt sequences i can still be explosive enough to to look like i'm incredibly functional and then the run of course uh you know is is key as well when i'm in the suit a lot of the running was done by justin howell my um, amazingly talented stunt guy and he's a, a great sprinter so like mm -hmm. i'm happy to let him take the lead on that stuff um but we want Wanted, you know also for me to, to, to be able to pull off uh, when I need to um, especially out of the suit um, so we were working on sprint training a lot we would go to the track at least once a week so yeah just working working in the weak places you know mobility flexibility and sprinting running are, are three of the places that are not my strong suit you know I can lift a bunch of weight and <laughs> look strong but those three are, are stuff that I really have to work at well, I can say, you know, when we were on the baseball field and we were training, you you were in the midst of the Halo 2 uh, series, oh, yeah, yeah, too, yeah. and you did smoke me. So, I mean, <laughs> you, you definitely are trained up. Well, I got that. long legs, long you, legs. Yeah, you got long legs. You got that on me, that's for sure. Uh, you mentioned, you know, being physically imposing regardless of the suit, and I think that applies to the season, of course, because, you know, for, you know, there, there's a great storyline there. There's a great narrative as to why there's a moment where you don't have your armor and you need to face up and square up against the Covenant man a man you know man a alien which is really cool to see and i think you know that's got to be something in your mind where i gotta look like master chief out of his suit still able to hang still able to kill covenant no matter without the artifice without the build out so tell me about was that something that you guys were is that something you guys made note of okay let's let's bulk up let's get bigger because i'm gonna need to to look like master chief out of the suit as well the setup of the show has always been telling a story that's you know equal parts master chief and equal parts john, john. so i always knew that john had to look imposing because that's half the story so you're alluding to a sequence in in episode four if you're listening to this that you've already seen a uh, hand-to-hand -hand knife fight with uh with a sing haley so um john on john on sing haley close quarters combat which is probably one of my favorite sequences of the whole season it's really really uh fantastic and 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 artfully done and it was hard to sh it was hard to shoot we um so there's stuff like that that's where really like the explosiveness and the mobility comes into play because to do uh, a fight like that that is so fast paced and high and kinetic uh and and the way we shot it too i had to shoot it with the stunt doubles pretending to be saying Haley on the other side but then the actual takes we used were me fighting air 
So we'd do the takes with the stunt doubles three, four times, and then they'd pull them out, and I had to do the whole fight wow. by myself without wow. anybody there to react to, just kind of from muscle memory or whatever. And those ended up being the takes that they would VFX the the characters on top of. I have no um, idea. That's crazy. So there's a, there's a level there of like muscle memory and um, you know just being quick enough and fast enough in your reflexes to make it look uh, dynamic. Yeah, I want to hear a little bit about you know how it felt at the end of this you know how your body felt you know <laughs> are you able to recover are you able to sleep like what are you doing to bounce back from some of these scenes during the season during the season yeah um i feel like i operate so much on adrenaline uh, it's like nine months of adrenaline mm -hmm. you know where yeah i'm sleeping and i and i have to make sure i get enough sleep to to do all of this and and function at a level that's uh, you know acceptable right. Right. <laughs> um but it's always a challenge getting enough sleep because of the hours of the shooting and because of the need to go to the gym so um yeah it's a real it's a real uh marathon for sure yeah. getting the season in the can and i feel like most of it is just running on adrenaline where you're like you you're not you know you're not getting enough rest you're overtired your body is breaking down you're sore everything is just but you just you just got to get it you know yeah. every day i go to work i show up there's on any given day over a thousand people working at quarter stages in budapest they don't want to worry about if my muscles are sore or if i'm tired you know there's there's hundreds of people on set where we're shooting with cameras at any given moment that need me to be highly energetic uh highly friendly and gregarious playing the music and setting a tone where everybody feels good and is doing their best work so there's no time for being tired there's no time for not showing up in the right mood there's no time for being grumpy there's no time for any of it yeah. so it doesn't matter how you're feeling you just put on your fucking game face yeah. and go to work and set a tone that everyone else can get behind and that's just what it is so at the end of nine months it's like <laughs> yeah. put me in a hot tub yeah. sit me by the ocean right. and l there's like a week of just doing nothing Amazing. you know just literally sleeping for a week and then i get back to to the good stuff which is being with my kids and being a dad and um getting to settle back into my regular life which is where i really draw sustenance from mm -hmm. and uh and where i really get the energy to then go forth and do another nine months of that yeah. because at the end of the day all of the work that i do is for them yeah. you know it's amazing. Um, I know you've had a long-standing working relationship with Eddie, Eddie Rayburn, your trainer. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how the working relationship is while you're on set, how you guys kind of <clears throat> communicate or don't communicate. Obviously, he's got to read where you're at and make sure you guys are staying for that finale, that you guys look the same at the end of the shoot as you do in the beginning of the shoot, or at least doing your best job towards that. So yeah. tell me about what it, why that uh, working relationship works. Um, because he's just a great human being and a great friend. Uh, he's an awesome support system. He, um, you know, he's, he comes from a military background and so he's always ready to do anything that's needed to get the job done. He's an amazing teammate, great dad. I can't say enough about the guy. Like he just shows up, you know? And so at the end of the day, like all the, the training, the, the, you know, specialty knowledge that he has around fitness, that's all great. But like, it's, it's having somebody there that would just do anything for you that you need. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like having a friend, you know? Uh, so he, we, we get on each other's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little irritable depending on what we're doing. You know, if I'm not, I'm, I'm leaning out, I'm eating only protein mm -hmm. and veg for like a week and a half. Um, you know, depriving myself of water at the end of some of these cuts and right. it can get hairy, man. You know, I get in moods where he knows when not to talk to me. He knows when not to get in my face and he knows when to push me and you know, when I can take it and when I need a little bit um, and sometimes if he gets it wrong I let him know and I'm like no I need this let's go mm -hmm. so the, there's just open lines of communication between us where we're constantly feeling out you know where the other person's at and there's a shorthand I think in communication that you get with somebody after 
six, seven years, like we've been doing it together. Also, just all the experimentation we've been doing with my body, you know, to start with somebody new at this point where it's like, oh, we put all this time in and figuring out kind of what works for me and what doesn't. Um, there's just a great shorthand. So yeah, he, he's, he's the man, Eddie Rayburn, you rock. It's the best dude. Um, you mentioned a little bit about that. And again, I think uh, this will, people really enjoy this scene where you have that close quarters combat. Mm. And I think there's, you know, there's a lot of that. You mentioned the war element here. Obviously, you're no stranger to the military films, no stranger to handling a weapon for film. A lot of battle rifle here. There's a lot of battle rifle. There's a lot of knife work. You know, I, tell me a little bit about how you guys prep for that. Was there any additional training to get ready for We're those get kinds some of energy si sword in there too? <laughs> energy sword, sword absolutely. Energy, energy sword. sword. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no extra training in terms of uh, prep before we were shooting, but as soon as I landed in Budapest, probably a month, maybe even a month and a half before we started shooting, I started working immediately with the stunt department, just in, you know, it was part of my routine of if I'm training every day, I'm probably heading over to stunts after I train at least two or three days a week, you know, and just at first you're not even working on choreo, you're just working on you know, boxing yeah. training, using throwing hands, doing a little bit of kickboxing. We even do some rolling, some jujitsu, just to you know stay limber, or whatever. Um, and then start playing around with the weapons and do stuff that's uh, you know without the choreo. Just start seeing what what's possible, playing around. And then obviously, as we start to, to develop the sequences, you start to work choreo with those guys. So, yeah, Phil Silvera was our stunt coordinator. Great, great stunt coordinator. We had a great team. A lot of amazing doubles over there including, as I said, Justin Howell, my main lead double. And uh, yeah, just putting in the time that with uh, with specialty weapons. And and for me, again, it's it all comes back to figuring out the right tone for the stunts. And, and Phil was a big part of that. David was obviously, you know, the leader in that regard. Uh, and one of the great things that we have is these oneers. you know, that close quarters combat comes in the middle of episode four, which has three or four of these oneers that have been stitched together so they're not actually one shots but they're made to look like they're all one big long take and I think that sense of propulsion uh, through episode four that takes you through the fall of reach is like one of the great uh, one of the great things of the whole season in episode four it's so kinetic uh, and can you tell a little bit about the the battle rifle and the energy so I mean what was it like moving those things those implements mm. uh, well a shout out to our props department you know they all also in the in the time between season uh, one and season two did a lot of work on on the weapons and one of my big issues with uh, uh, the weapons in first season is that they were non-functional you know that you don't get any feedback from them it's one of the big experiences or one of the things that for me as someone who's appeared a lot in movies with real weapons and in military stuff is that you have these functional weapons that are you're getting reverb from them you actually you know in some situations you see the countdown on on how much ammunition you have left um, but mostly you get the you get the kickback from from the weapon that it feels like you're that something's happening mm -hmm. right uh, we didn't have any of that in season one but in between season one and season two they came up with some really great functional props that gave us that sense of interaction with it. So the battle rifle was was more responsive. Uh, we did in fact have a, a ammunition counter as you're as you're doing that. So there's stuff to interact with. You can do mag changes, which just makes everything feel more authentic and more real. Energy swords were a little more complicated. They're <laughs> they're, they're you know when you're swinging a thing at the end of the day, and they end, they become uh, mostly visual effects. And in that regard, we had some like where they turn on turn off but they just became like uh, more hassle than they were worth yeah yeah um you know obviously people are gonna see this people are gonna see the second season loving paramount plus love what they're doing do you already have your your sights on the third season do you already have ideas of where you want master chief to go uh, no, I'm. Uh, I take everything as it comes, and uh, at this point, you know, we season two is is on the air on Paramount Plus, and until somebody tells me we're doing season three, I'm not even thinking about it, bro. <laughs> you don't get training yet, yeah? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I I take my downtime. <laughs> I love that. Have you been able to play the game anymore lately? Obviously, I know you're a busy worker. You got a family. I feel like that's that's gotta be tough to even yeah, try to snake. Yeah, a I don't. Time. I don't get too much time with the video 
video games. My kids, uh, my kids are much more active than I am. Uh, I've popped into Infinite a couple times. Nice. Uh, mostly it was while we were shooting. We've been away for a while now, so I haven't popped in recently. Yeah. Who uh, who would you play with on on set if you did uh, hop into a game on the Halo set? I, I mean, obviously Kiki would be the the number one, and she <laughs> she came by a few times and played with us. She she brought us some nice controllers from nice. Seattle. So. Let's go. That's yeah. a plug right there. Exactly. Just yeah, hand those good. off to me, man. Come good on. to have good to have some friends at Microsoft. <laughs> awesome, bro. Well, great to sit down with you, Pablo. Always yeah, a man. pleasure, man. We'll do it again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Charles. Appreciate it, bro. Awesome.